That means that God's word brings step-by-step direction on how to enter into things, how to break into places, how to do what I need to do next, how to do an outreach that will be effective for special, how to do this, how to do that. This is how God's word is. So God's word can show you a crowd, light, but then it must also come and be that lamp for you. From today, may revelation grace operate effortlessly in your lives. So, there are three ministries of light that delivers rulership and favor to us. Number one, glimmers of light. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19 that we read. Glory to God. We have also a much sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn and the day star arising. Like, as unto the first glimmer of light. This light... Is not full blast. And you will have experienced it when you are going through a situation. It starts like the first ray of light that shines before dawn. Hope. You know, many times you get into God's word. Lord, I want to sit in rulership. I want to sit in dominion. Situations are looking the other way around. Then you read, my God shall supply all your needs. And then hope. Then it looks like as if, you know, this is the light that is going to come before dawn. And the Bible says, you do well to take it unto this light. When people stop there, they don't see God's word change their lives. Though. And this is why sometimes people get disappointed. That I thought I opened the scripture and I saw Philippians 4, 19. And I just took it now and I memorized it. It's not enough. It's not memorizing scripture that changes you. It's the power that comes with light that changes a man. And you agree with me that it is darkest before dawn. So, a believer's life can be looking so dark, despite their commitment to, until light comes. You know, it says, where unto you do well that you take it as unto the first glimmer of light, as unto a light that shines in darkness, until the day dawns. At that time, you know, when the day is trying to dawn, huh, is the darkest time, oh, believers can find themselves there. That they are committed. One of the major issues with believers is that they, you can confuse faith with faithfulness. So they are not the same. People say that I've served God. I'm supposed to pass my exams. It's not the same thing as faith. I don't know why this happened to me. I don't know why this happened to that person. Because I know the person, he used to sweep church. He even vowed to God that he would never miss sweeping church. Why is it the one that this type of thing happened to? <laughs> faithfulness and faith are not the same. Faith is by light too. There are people that sweep the church. When you ask them and say, what is John 3? They don't even know. Not to talk of protection scriptures. Somebody was carrying Bishop David Oedeko's book and was poor. His salmon notes. How can you be carrying Bishop Oedeko's salmon notes? You are the one that holds the salmon notes for him. Where they are teaching prosperity from and you are poor. So it is not by walking around the vineyard that you eat the fruits of the vineyard. Never sit down saying, I know my God will never fail me. On what basis? Because many times, if you bring the logic of God to the court of moral jurisprudence, it will be as if God is unfair. It will be as if God is unjust. You will start hearing things like, Lazarus, the one whom you love, is sick. <laughs> God loves somebody, he's sick. So when you hear people saying that, I know God loves me, I, God can love you, you won't have one cobble. God can love you, you are not experiencing favor. God can love you, you are not experiencing, you know, the goodness of God. Lazarus, whom you love, he is sick. Don't forget that. So, in the court of moral jurisprudence, it will be as if God is unfair. Because if God will help anybody, light must first shine. If God will help you, light must come. Jesus looked and saw the people. The Bible says that he saw them. They looked like sheep without shepherd. Right? And then he started an NGO. That's what he did, right? He started an NGO that took care of the different needs of this crowd. 5,000. He looked at them. They were like sheep without shepherd. What did he start doing? He started teaching. Because he knew that only revelation knowledge could change the lives of these people. That what will make these poor people to become rich... Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He went about preaching, teaching, healing. Because it is with light that people come out of situations. 
Anything that is a problem in your life. And I don't mean to sound accusing to you. Something that is consistently a problem in your life is because of inadequacy of light. Seek light as if your life depends on it. Because your life depends on it. If light does not come, we things continue the way it's currently going. You say, you know, he's serving God. Seek light too. Seek light. Just continue seeking light. Even if it will take you five years to find that light. Sit down there. But once it comes, ah, yeah, you can't go down forever. Papa Egin was 17 years old with heart problem. He got healed of an incurable heart problem by light. That light carried his ministry till 86 from 17. That light powered his heart. There were times that his heart was almost failing again as he was growing. But he was literally breathing on Mark 11, 23 and 24. One light can serve you for life. Stop being sentimental with Christianity. That far. Let me start going to church properly in the next three months and give God a try. Ah. You're coming to church for three months consecutively. does not impress God. Though. See, you come to church continuously. You don't come to church continuously. God loves you. God loves you all the same. So that means that if you're not even going to do anything to end God's love, so that means that that coming to church will not change things because before you decided you will come, he already loved you. You now say you come. He still loved you. He didn't love you more. He didn't love you less. And look at the sinners in the world. So does God not love them? Does he love them or does he love them less? No, now. It is until the day the saving faith for the gospel comes on them by light that the Spirit of God opens their hearts to receive the gospel that they will get saved. So it's not also by saying, you see, I will make sure that I'm now sweeping the floor more. Unless that is by light and faith. That thing, you will do it and it will be as if God has not risen for you. Light is what changes your life. So seek wisdom as if your life depends on it. Labor to enter into this rest. Because once light has come, rest has come. On any area of your life. When light came to my academics, ah, rest came. But it took me years to find it too, but I was on it. Always stay. It will worth it in the end. It cannot go to waste now. There's a reason why when we come and we'll just say, all of you just start praying. When we finish, say, bye-bye, God has said your prayers. There's a reason we are teaching. It's because teaching is what gives soft landing. Real soft landing. Light is what gives real soft landing. That if we can lay light out for you, you will land soft in life. You also, if you can labor to find light, you will enter into rest. From today, may rest be the order of the day in your lives. May the Lord give you revelation grace. In Mark chapter 4 verse 24, he says the amount of thought and study that you give to the word of God, amplified version, will determine the amount of light, amount of virtue that it gives back to you. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear. It's not just that you are hearing it. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth to you will be the measure of virtue and revelation knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Who is the one who heard? Is the one that light has come back to. When light comes to you, more comes to you. Light is the secret to abundance. Light is the secret to rulership. Light is the secret to favor. Therefore, I speak over you. The garment of revelation grace, may it be upon you. This thing that provokes wisdom, this thing that provokes revelation knowledge, is rising from within you. God does not dash people this glimmer of light. Too. You know, there are people that say, ah, it seems it's light. Lord, give me light. You now be going on the street. Give me light. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep it burning. Keep it burning till the end of day. <laughs> Come back home. It is important for you to settle down with light. God does not dash people glimmers of light. You labor for it. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved. There is no software of this thing, no. Ah, it's the hardware of labor. You will sit down with messages. Nobody can help you do this thing. You will do three months reading challenge. Thank God for a church like this that supplies abundant grace that makes this thing easy. Partake. Participate. Because, you know, with the saints, strength is multiplied. Thought need to show yourself approved. 
If you see me studying books like this, if you get into my study, you'll be confused. Because you ask me that, are you reading all these books? I know we say I didn't read them, but book used to catch my eye every time. You know that type of, you just enter out of ginger. Say, in this season of my life, divine healing, open doors, prophetic insight. You will now pack like eight books. You will now see that you now start reading. There will not be a problem along the way. Then that's how the book will be there for two years. You know? <laughs> but then I kept studying. People of God, when I was younger in university days, my money was finishing in Fairman Bookshop there. We will go like this. Last money, to, maybe your money is like 5,800 inside your account. You will get there like this. You must go and look for a book. <laughs> this 5,800. It will finish. If it finish, I'm in trouble. Money can finish, but light can't finish. So let's invest wisely. Oh. Not that you look at the 5,800, you can't use it to play binary. 28 palms. <laughs> you know? Or you say that this 5'8, somebody came to my school that spoke to us about 20% in three months. 20% on top of 5,800. May poverty not do us. How much is the 20% that will come on top of it? And then what is coming to you is 7'2. So you use three months to be hungry to collect 7'2. There is nothing that pays dividends like light. Let's not lie. The return on investment in light is always more than 100%. How much was my blessing of the Lord? 600 naira. Hey, how much am I worth now? All the books that I struggled to buy so that I can swallow prosperity. I don't think it's up to 10,000 naira. <laughs> Invest wisely. But that time, that 10,000 naira is money. We will enter the bookstore, we will buy books. By the time we will be calculating, we will calculate this number issue. Then they will round it over 3 6. They will slash money out of it that you, you are a regular customer. 3 1. Or 3 2, be going. Ah, you say, see the people of God. That was the last money of me. Like, if I finish buying, I think all I will have left is 500 naira. I paid though. Now, this 500 naira, I use it to go to UCH, that wherever in life the thing carries me to. The life I get will continue carrying me. As it carried me. So, some of you, it might not be books, but you are spending money every day to come to church like this. You will look into your account sometimes. It will be as if, you know that thing, that the money is almost finished. I are coming to church. But you are coming because of light. Ah, the return on investment. Hey, how many percent will you call this type of return now? Even in a shorter time than you can think. There's no place you want to invest into that will pay you something that God will pay you. It's not possible. That's why I prefer sowing seeds to buying shares. Nothing wrong with buying shares. But if you ask me to choose, I will sow seed. And that is because I found out that when I sow seed, when the returns on the seed starts coming, shares can't give you that type. But you know, because the figures are temporarily, you know, you, the way you look at it, it looks calculatable. That's why it is easier to relate to this. But light is better. Go for light. Search for light. Any investment you can make in light, make it. It is not wasted. It is not wasted. Coming to church every day of fasting, it is not wasted. You get to the bookstand there, you look at effortless change, you buy with your last one to when you came to church. It's not wasted. All the ones you have done in the past that you have bought, is not wasted. But don't close that book. Open it now. From this moment, make up your mind to open it. Start praying. Start looking. You might have read it before. That time, you didn't have the problem you have now. See, books don't mean the same thing at two different times. You might have heard the message before. When you now enter the problem that the message was to address, and you start listening, you're like, hey, where was I? You were there. But now it is speaking to you on a different frequency. You are handling bigger matters of life. I have a library that is a cupboard size, a full cupboard of, library, of books. Like that, if you come to my library, I can make a library out of it and make money every year. For people to just come and sit down and don't be reading. You pay subscription fee. And you will read for a whole year. You will not be able to finish. You sit down, you read. One year, you'll be tired. You'll continue the next year. You say, Pastor, good night to Happy New Year tomorrow. How <laughs> to go on holiday. That's how your library should be. When I was in school, all the, my shares used to fall down. In Kutio, the chef reached one point. The thing collapsed. In UCH, that chef was caving in. 
my book table that is in my current house, the thing too, he collapsed. Book everywhere. If your structures are collapsing under the weight of books, your life can collapse. Someone said, a tattered Bible belongs to someone whose life is arranged. Because there are many things that science and social engineering doesn't have answers for. So, I stay with God's word, looking for answers for my generation. It is what it is. I take anything that I am going through as a project for my generation. There's nothing you are going through that is not a project for your generation. When you come out of it, there are many that will be attached to the light you got. Take everything you are going through as a project. Start looking for answers. Because prayers without revelation knowledge does not generate enough power. Yes. Because light packs energy into prayer. You know how it works? John chapter 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you ask anything that you want and it will be given to you. I say that, but Lord, your word abides in me. I have plenty of memory, but I'm not seeing what I want. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, it's not talking about having like 30 memory verses. You know, they will tell us these things in those days, and as young children, they will start teaching us memory verses, which is not bad. But what he's telling you is that if you abide in me and on any subject area that you are standing in faith for, light comes on it. There's nothing you ask for that won't come to you. This is key to rulership and favor. Look for light. This year, do what? Look for light. My spiritual father started praying for prosperity, more prosperity. Do you know why? It was tightening and there was no increase. You know, it used to happen. Does it not happen that you are tightening or that it's not, there's no increase? It happens now. There's a time you sacrifice like this. Ah, it should be like, what's going on? It's not your sacrifice that is at fault. It was tightening. In fact, he has tightened since he was born. All his life, he does not remember missing his tight ones. Yet, he was borrowing money. There were challenges. No increase. Then suddenly, as he was praying, he saw Proverbs 11, verse 24 to 25. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is that withholds more than his meat, yet he tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall also be watered. And he started thinking about it. Then the light shone. And he saw it that the issue now is not my giving, it's art enlargement. Too. Because when it comes to being watered, many of you, when you give, you are watered back. It might not take up to one week. Somebody will just send you money. Something will just happen. But what the Bible tells you about your tithe is that the windows of heaven are supposed to open. So that's why it's like, why is there a disparity? It's not that you are not seeing this watering back, coming back. It's the mega wealth we are talking about. He said, the key is in the largeness of art. And the key to the largeness of art is the liberality. The liberal soul shall be made fat. What does that mean? Then he saw that this titan is not enough. Anybody that knows deep prosperity knows that titan gives dominion. is the basic thing. Your voice will be heard, but you might not have money. When you start titan like this, dominion, you will see your name everywhere. People will be attending to you. People will be attending to your business. You will know that we day. But you see, until you add a measure of consistency with sacrifice, the largeness of art you are looking for cannot come. Tight does not enlarge your heart. Because tight is always lower than your current level. If you get 100,000 and you give 10,000, where is the heart enlargement there? But if you earn 100,000 per month and you save, save, save and give 500,000, what will happen to your heart? 500,000 will be there. Your heart grows to the size of your seed. That was the light he saw. And so he made up his mind that he will start giving a special seed every month. This is the key to rulership and dominion. And he started 5,000. Because, look, sacrificial giving beyond yourself is what enlarges your heart. Sacrificial giving beyond yourself is what enlarges your heart. You might be believing God for a particular new level in your life. Many of you here will believe God for dangerous testimonies. One of the reasons you can do that is because of your CD. How many of your classmates can say they are believing God for half a million? Ah. You have not asked yourself before. You have you ever gone into your class randomly? You just see your classmates just say that. Do you know I'm believing God for one million? They can't do it. But you know you can tell them that ah, it's not hard to say that. Just say it. Just say I am believing God for one million. They will say that, ah, am I mad? Who is going to give up? Hey, get out, you standing job people, you have come again. 
But that thing is enlargement of art. That thing comes because of CD. So there is an aperture in the art of a man that can only be opened for finances by giving. And that's why I told you, I told you that everything I'm saying to you, teaching you how to stand in the system with wisdom, that you must not be dogmatic and say that, ah, this thing pastor has taught me, this is what I will not start practicing. That's not the way. Because I'm not saying that you should not be practicing. I'm telling you that the way is the way of the spirit. What I did for you was that this is what you have always known. There's another possibility. Look at it. Don't go and stay here. Don't go and stay here. Let God lead you part time. And I said, the thing that really powers our prosperity in this assembly is not being wise, it's giving grace. Yes, Aya! This thing that is upon us to give, Paul called the giving grace an unspeakable gift. Make sure that anywhere you go, you are never ever thinking of how to get money out of the place. Your thought is how to add value. It's God that brings increase. I'm the one that teaches you to profit. What I've taught you is so that when God is leading you, religion will not stop you from taking what God is saying to you. But if you will err, that you are not sure, make sure that you err on the side of holiness. Your integrity must not be in question. Your name must never be in question as a Christian. Everything must be in order. You give your best. There must be integrity. Jacob did not sit down and start saying, -ba 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 -ba. Lord, turn the wealth of Laban into my hands. No, he is in Laban's house to prosper Laban. He is in Laban's house to do the work he was asked to do. Not that he would sit down and be thinking that this deal that Laban gave me, how can I? No, God does not prosper lack of integrity. There was a time that Jacob was doing this work even at his own loss. If anything misplaced, he will go and replace it. So that means that he was never there trying to make any extra profit off Laban. There was integrity. There must be integrity in everything that you do. If they say, do this, make sure you do it and do it beyond. And then, you know, when he got to the time of increase, he told his wives, he said, God saw how Laban was treating me. That means that allow God be your rewarder. And then I saw a vision in the night. That means God leads. And then I'll show you wisdom from the scriptures, how to deal with men, how to relate with men. And don't say, I don't like politics. So you are careful of what you say you don't like because the word of God has made some things plain. You get into God's word, get wisdom from God's word, and then, you know, follow the leadings of the spirit by time. Even with the instructions, without the instructions, even if I didn't teach what I taught in the last three, four, five days. You know, many of you felt like, ah, I've seen something. Even if I didn't teach it, it's not that thing you have seen that will prosper you. The thing that is powering prosperity, yeah. Is the giving grace. The way you people give is dangerous. Forget about amounts. There are not many places where people can give like this. Ah, the way I give, you can't give the way I give with common sense. Oh. The way many people here give, somebody said that, sir, this provision for you. Put it inside, can I must go. I opened like this. My wife saw her own provision. I saw my own provision. I said, what a provision. May the Lord provide earnestly for this person. And may I get more of this type of provision. It's a wonderful provision from heaven. <laughs> but, you know, this is as far. Somebody just gets on a bonus. If somebody gives you $1,000 free now, you will come and give me more. You, you, you will know. You are, even if you don't give me everything, you will first think about me. That, ah, <laughs> the man that has been screaming like this, he must enjoy somebody. Ah, ah Pastor, ah, Pastor, where are you? Where can I meet you? Where am I? <laughs> I said, What happened to you? He said, Pastor, it has landed. Ah, Pastor, I see the goodness of God. He said, Daddy, please send me your account. I should say, I should have a type. There, there, there. <laughs> Glory to God forevermore. It is that thing that is making us to be standing here and be putting hand behind the back like who preach. This brother here, three months ago, he came into the church and then he started hearing God's word and pastor gave a word and last week he got a job paying in millions of naira. As if that was not enough. He would say, ah! He got a house and then he got an official, ah! Those type of things don't happen because somebody is teaching. It's forces of the spirit. Ah, his forces, oh, forces that are answering to sacrifice. Therefore, from today, may there be a ceaseless flow of the energies of the spirit in your finances. 
Mana dia bagaso, rete bege dia ba, lambra tiasa. This thing that opens doors in high places, that causes springs to come in wilderness. May it start operating your lives this year. <laughs>